Hi, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine, and this is your Kenmore 1774, or as it's also called, 17740. And uh, this is the final test before we pack her up to ship her out to you. And uh, in this test, we're going to go over the basic operation of the machine. Uh, so, for starters, uh, let's wind the bobbin. Find your bobbin under the throat plate here. <clears throat> and if you pull a little lever out on the side, it gives you something to hold on to and lift it up. And as long as you're holding that little lever, the bobbin doesn't drop out while you're moving it around. <clears throat> that bobbin's got quite a bit of thread on it, so we're just going to thread a different bobbin. Um, put your thread on the spool pin. Go around the tension device uh, from the front towards the back clockwise. Uh, so you cross back over your thread and into one of the holes on the side of the bobbin. And hold it in place while you put a few wraps on there to uh, hold the thread in place while the bobbin winds. And with the thread coming on in this direction, put the uh, bobbin on the bobbin winder and press the actuator forward. To declutch the machine, uh, unlike some machines where you turn the uh, uh, chrome knob in the center of the hand wheel towards you a little bit to declutch. On this one, you do just pull the whole hand wheel straight back, and you'll hear it click in and out of uh, its connection. So, with the uh, hand wheel pulled out, the machine is declutched, and now the motor can wind the bobbin without cycling the whole machine. So, here we go. Put a little tension on your thread. Turn it up on you. And we won't put a whole lot of thread on because this is just a test. And that'll do. Reclutch your machine by pressing in the hand wheel. Uh, pull the lever back to release your bobbin. Then with the thread coming up the top, off the top of the bobbin in this direction, drop the bobbin in the bobbin case and guide the thread up through that little slot and under the leaf spring where you'll feel it click into place. And You should have just enough tension on the bobbin uh, that you can dangle the uh, bobbin case without the thread unwinding, but just barely. With this little finger pointing up, slide it onto the spindle in the center of the uh, hook. And that little finger will go into the cutout that it's made to fit into. And that holds your, your bobbin stationary while your machine turns around it. Okay. To thread the machine. Put your thread on the spool pin. You don't go around the uh, tension device this time. You go behind the little thread guide on the back and into the slot across the top, down between the discs of the upper tension assembly. Pick up the little thin check spring there and pull up until your thread goes into the notch at the top of the uh, tension assembly. Then go into the thread guide at the top, uh, into the take-up lever, into the thread guide below the take-up lever, into the thread guide below that one, and then into the thread guide on the needle clamp. Then this machine threads from the front towards the back of the machine. 
you may already know all of this you may have had this very machine at one time uh, but just in case this will be a little refresher for you hold your needle thread loosely and turn the hand wheel towards you one full revolution and the needle will take the thread down where the hook will pick it up and wrap it around the bobbin and bring up your lower thread and there it is lower thread put your thread between the toes of the presser foot and towards the back of the machine some people say to the left some people say to the back i just go to the back um now we want to sew a straight stitch and uh, so we don't want the reverse mechanism engaged. There's a red dot, then there's a white and green dot uh, on the other side. You want to be on the red dot for just forward stitching. Uh, the white dot uh, is for stretch stitching and the green dot is to modify the stitch. Uh, red dot. Um, Let's see, this is your stitch length, so you're going to want to go up to about, I think it's 12 millimeters on this machine. The 12, uh, it's either 12 millimeters or 12 stitches per inch. And I kind of suspect that it's 12 millimeters. Down here, this is your stitch width, how far the machine's going to zig and zag. And we're going to do a straight stitch, so we're going to have the machine on the red dot. It'll go from the red dot all the way up to number four, four being your widest zigzag and the red dot being zero. The inner knob you want to turn until the red dot is facing up and that is your straight stitch. It's also your zigzag when you add a little stitch width. So, so over here is your reverse. This is your feed drop. But we'll get to that. So put some fabric under the presser foot. As you can see I've already tested extensively. Um, and let's see are we all ready? Yeah we want to. This is your uh, pressure on your sewing foot. We want it about halfway down or a little more than halfway. Just enough that uh, the fabric moves along with authority. Uh, without the feed dogs digging in and uh, do a damage to your fabric. Okay, so now a little gas and here we go. I usually hold the threads for the first stitch or two until it locks into place. tension. I usually set it so that the uh, ballpark tension is around three. Uh, you can adjust it up or down a little depending on uh, whether your stitches are firmly locked uh, or loose and loopy. Okay, that's a little better. I was not satisfied with that tension, so I took the uh, tension assembly apart again and reconfigured it. But now, okay, yeah, that's a nice even stitch. Okay, um, so to add uh, a little bit of stitch width for a zigzag. You use this outer ring here, and as I mentioned before, it's graduated from zero to four. And uh, I'm going to go to about three. And yeah, that's a nice zigzag. I'm going to close up the stitch length a little bit. Um, 
and uh, you have several uh, possible stitches that you can do um, on the red dot for the uh, forward stitching. Uh, let's go around to uh, get the needle up out of the fabric so we don't bend it. Let's go on around to a line stitch. And uh, I'm not sure if I need to add the zigzag for that or if it's going to zig and zag itself. But let's see here. Um, okay, let's see. Got a little width. Yeah, it's a nice looking line stitch. Um, now, uh, get the needle up out of the fabric. I'm going to turn this switch over to stretch stitches. And uh, let's go back to straight stitch. And now we're going to sew a straight stitch, but it's going to be tripled. Each stitch is going to be three stitches wide. Uh, no zigzag. Okay. Let's go for a little longer stitch just to make it more visible. Now you can see the fabric moving back and forth to make a stretch stitch. And each time it goes back, it's laying down a two or three stitches in each point. You can see it looks a lot thicker than uh, maybe it's just two widths. Anyway, uh, now if we add some zigzag to that, and have a zigzag stretch stitch. And there are uh, several other uh, different stitches down there that you can try out. Um, but we're going to change the cam now and um, to do that, you open a little door on the top. And again, again, gonna get the needle up out of the fabric. And you just lift out this. This is the permanent cam. It stays in there all the time when you're not using uh, one of the other cams. And when you take that other cam out, put this one back in. And you'll notice that one side is green, the other side is white. Look in your manual and it will tell you when to use uh, which one. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, lifting the uh, lifting the cam and turning it 180 degrees and putting it back down. Uh, let's do what we're doing. Let's do one of the double cams. Uh, oh yeah, let's do fishies. Fish are always good. Um, Uh, line up the hole on top with um, uh, the pin on the uh, on the cam uh, shaft, I guess it is. And if you'll notice, one of these has a little dot at the top of it. And if you start with a little with the uh, that hole on the guide pin, let's see, let's get that back out of the way. Uh, this moves the uh, the uh, the cam follower back out of the way while you put your cam in. Now, I think that we want about about ten on the stitch length and about two on the stitch width, and this inner. Uh, knob here you'll see that there's a setting for cam so you turn it until cam is at the pointer and here we go and 
make the cute little fishies. And you can modify that. I'm going to add a little more stitch width, make it a little bit fatter fishy. Yeah, that's more of a tuna than a trout. So, uh, you can modify your various stitches. Uh, it's all in your user manual, which uh, you should sit down with a cup of coffee and just read it through. Uh, it's a pretty quick read, and you don't have to get too into the details of uh, the different feed and stuff. But uh, the basic operation of the machine, the setup and operation, uh, it's just real good background knowledge, and you'll get the best use out of your machine. Um, Let's see, what have we not looked at? We've not looked at the stitch width, so uh, let's go back to the uh, permanent cam. So open the door, push the cam follower back, the, this cam out, and I'm go going to put it with the white side facing the uh, guide pin. Uh, without this cam in here, it's not going to zigzag. I imagine you could sew a straight stitch without it, but just leave it in all the time when you don't have a, one of your uh, other cams in. Your button holder and uh, various other uh, assorted goodies are in this box here. And uh, online you can find uh, bigger sets of cams and uh, lots of uh, different uh, buttonhole patterns, uh, different uh, accessories that you can add to this. Um, so I've talked about the sewing foot pressure. Feed drop, if you want to do uh, um, like uh, darning or patching or if you just want to make art, you know, draw pictures. Uh, and you want to move the fabric yourself, and uh, rather than the machine move the fabric, uh, you'll want a uh, uh, my goodness, where's my brain today? You want a darning hoop um, or embroidery hoop uh, to keep your fabric taut. And uh, to drop the feed, you just turn the knob away from the U, which is for up. And you want to release all the pressure on your sewing foot. And now, you're in command. You can move your fabric any way you want. Draw pictures, write your name. You have to pay. It's okay. Uh, and then when you're ready to let the machine sew again, you turn, uh, you raise your feed dogs by turning it to the U position push this uh, uh, your sewing foot pressure adjuster down halfway or a little more and uh, now the machines so reverse is over here forward reverse forward um, when I send it to you I'm going to send it in the uh, forward stitch position on the red dot and I'll put it at about 12 stitches per inch which is a relatively short stitch put it on zero uh, for the stitch width and put the red dot up for straight stitching there's your on and off button and uh, that's it thanks for watching thank you for uh, your purchase, you help us keep doing what we love to do, which is restore beautiful sewing machines. Okay, thanks. This is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing.